How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Now we got a big three-game series against the Chicago White Sox, which isn't the best team in the world, but coming off a successful road trip, obviously winning that series against the Dodgers. And we're six and a half games out of first place, and the Tampa Bay Rays continue to win baseball games, which is unfortunate because the Red Sox could have done some damage, could have helped themselves, and instead they plummeted themselves into the bottom of the AL East, which is where they belong. But hopefully the Rays end up dropping a few games too, so the Yankees can take on. Um, a little bit of momentum and pick up some games there here and there. But, you know, White Sox coming up. Aaron Judge probably not going to be in the lineup for the next couple days. It's possible he hits the lot kind of long-term IL stint because of the toe injury. They're doing MRIs and x-rays to determine if there's any bone structural damage. And we'll update you, of course, when we find out any more information on that front. But today, we want to talk about Clay Holmes. And Clay Holmes has completely turned his 2023 season around. We've talked about Clay in the past. He really, really struggled earlier on this year. But, you know, Ryan wrote a tremendous article breaking down exactly why Clay Holmes could turn his season around, and what do you know? He now looks like normal Clay Holmes, and he's been doing a great job of utilizing a specific strategy to help himself. Now, Ryan, before we dive into the good stuff, and I know you have a lot of information on Clay and what he's been doing lately, how are you doing today, my friend? Um, I'm doing great. You know, I feel like that series in LA, you know, not that it affects the division that much. It's not a divisional opponent, but the Dodgers are a really good team. Um, and you go to LA, you drop that first game, you kind of get punched in the mouth when Severino gets rocked and you're able to rebound beautifully. You get two great stars from Cole and Herman. And as you mentioned, Clay Holmes looking brilliant. I think he's given up one earned run in his last 15 innings pitched. Um, that's remarkable, right? And the big reason for that change has to do with his ability to throw, uh, two different sliders, right? So, um, for those unaware, right, obviously you guys are seeing a new label on certain sliders, right, the sweeper, right, and everyone's like, oh my god, what's this pitch, right, and it's this big loopy breaking ball, it looks beautiful, right, it's a, it's a visually very appealing pitch because it moves a million uh, feet to the left, it looks like, but one of the big downsides to the sweeper is that it doesn't play well to opposite-handed batters, so if you're a right-handed pitcher, throwing a sweeper to a lefty, typically doesn't result in a lot of uh, good results, right? Lefties are more likely to lay off of the pitch. They're more likely to swing at it if it's hanging and take advantage of that. Um, so Clay Holmes was struggling with trying to get lefties out. That was his big issue. It's been his big issue for a while now. But by throwing a different slider, which is more of a traditional slider, this is called the gyro slider. Think, you know, Garrett Cole, kind of like Albert Abreu, Luis Castillo, their sliders, it just kind of looks like it's just dropping. Um, those sliders play a lot better to left-handed batters from right-handed pitchers because they have a lot more vertical movement. They don't have a lot of side-to-side -side movement. And if you look at what works from right-handed pitchers to left-handed hitters, it's vertical movement. And I've said that a million times. I beat it like a drum, but I think it's important for us to remember what type of movement works against what type of hitters. So from Clay Holmes's perspective, now he has a pitch he can use against left-handed hitters, and it has a 46.8% whiff percentage, right? So, you know, looking at it just on paper results-wise, it's been excellent. It, again, gives him a different look. It doesn't mean that now he just has to throw sinkers to lefties because he can't use his sweeper. I don't think he's thrown a sweeper to a left-handed batter all year. Um, that's how, you know, unconfident he is in that pitch against lefties, right? Um, and if you're a left-handed hitter, if you know a sinker is coming, right, you know you can kind of handle that pitch, right? You know, we, we saw against Cleveland, you know, he only threw sinkers to Josh Naylor, to Jose Ramirez. They started seeing off on it, right? When you see the same pitch a million times, you know what pitch is coming. It's not easy to still hit a baseball, but it becomes easier. Um, and and kind of knowing how Clay Holmes is, which is very erratic. He's never going to have great command. You know, just having nasty pitches that he can throw and he can say, all right, I'm going to, you know, try to throw it over the middle of the plate and it's going to miss the middle of the plate. But it just depends on where the movement takes it. Having a pitch like that gyro slider that has great movement means that, look, now they can't just sit on the sinker. Now they have to think slider as well. And you're going to get a lot of swings and misses and weak contact. And if you look at his FIP, it's lower than what it was last year. His ERA in terms of of you know how it's adjusted to league average because the run environment has gone up since last year more steals more balls in play product of the reduced shift and the new pickoff rules um you know it's it's very similar to where it was in 2022 so you know as you mentioned clay holmes is he back right i, I think he is is he going to go out there and close every game and have you know a stretch where like last year when the first half he was literally untouchable i don't think so i think that's unrealistic to expect from anyone um but can he go out there now and one close games for you effectively yes is he versatile can you use him in the 
seventh and eighth inning. Yes, I think the closer by committee thing has worked brilliantly for the Yankees. And I think you can agree with me here. And I, I kind of want to ask you this question. Do you think this is the future of the Yankees bullpen where it's like, hey, we're just going to ride the hot hand, whether it's Wandy Peralta, Jonathan Luizaga when he comes back, Michael King, Ron Marnaccio when he's red hot or Clay Holmes. It's just a matter of who's hot and who's not for the closer spot. I think that's worked a lot better for them this year than, you know, just relying on a role Chapman and praying he doesn't blow a game. Um, you know, what do you think about that for the future of their bullpen, that bullpen, that closer by committee thing? Well, listen, I actually wrote this morning about why it made no sense to me that we went out and spent $11.5 million on Tommy Canely because you look at the Yankees' strategy and they've been finding extraordinary value from players that are essentially worth next to nothing. You know, guys that were on their way out of the MLB, like how about Jimmy Cordero, who hadn't pitched in a couple of years, had Tommy John surgery, and now is one of our most high-leverage bullpen pieces that you can use interchangeably as, a, as an opener, as a spot opener for an inning or two. He's a really good relief pitcher. Obviously, has done great for us lately. These players are not making a lot of money. Why did we give Canely, who hasn't pitched more than 14 innings in three years, $11.5 million when our strategy has been working well? Maybe they wanted Canely's you know, energy in the clubhouse. I don't know what the desire was there, but we've gotten so much value out of guys that otherwise shouldn't even be in the MLB, and it's because of Matt Blake and the kind of... The, the way that they're building this bullpen, the types of pitches that they have. Now, Clay Holmes, interestingly, this year has seen a pretty drastic reduction in ground ball rate. Last year, 75.8%. Now he's looking at 53.1%, so a t more than 20% decrease. Velocity looks good. Obviously, the ERA is lower to 2.84, which is you know hovering around the 2.54 he had last year. His, strike up, his strikeouts are up uh, significantly, um, which is nice to see. 11.37 strikeouts per nine compared to 9.19 last year. But, you know, with that ground ball rate going down, you know, you see a little bit more fly balls, you know, the left on base rate still 77.1%, but he's walking a lot more batters, like four, two, six walks per nine. Um, and Ryan, as we know, we all know this about you, you hate walks from bullpen pieces, you know, that's the one thing you don't want, especially eighth, ninth inning guys that are coming in at high leverage moments, those lead off walks, they kill you, they eat you alive. And Clay Holmes has been um, a bit suspect in that regard, uh, in the most recent recent memory like just maybe not even most recent maybe a couple of weeks ago but lately he's been better now the, the problem is he's walked four batters in his last four outings um, he's only given up one earned run during that sample size so he's kind of gotten away with it because he's also struck out five batters in that sample size so you know you'll see him come in you know he faces a couple batters he, he's in there for an inning and maybe he walks one or two but he's also he's walking one or two and then striking out two or three straight so that's kind of what you're getting from Clay Holmes he it's he's a little bit inconsistent like you said, he's never going to be a great locator, um, but he will be, a, I guess, a high strikeout guy, but he's also going to be a high walk guy. At least that's kind of the way his identity is shaping out. Um, do those walks concern you, though? Because I know you mentioned the, the velocity, or rather not the velocity, but rather the location can be problematic for him at times. Um, are you worried about that? Are you worried about the walks? Do you think that at some point, like, that's going to bite him in the butt? Or are you like, okay, you know what? The strikeouts are up. He can get out of these problems unscathed and the ground ball rate is increasing. Um, it has looked a lot better recently. So, you know, is that a little bit of a concern for you? Yeah, so I think that's an excellent question, you know, referring to just kind of like how the like how how bad are walks in late game situations? I think they're bad, right? Um, but when we're talking about Clay Holmes, I'm also going to include Wani Peralta on this because Wani Peralta's walk rate, I think, is higher than league average. And it's been higher than league average in his tenure as a Yankee, um, you know. Guys who get ground balls and guys who just have really good stuff, you know, a byproduct of that not just is, isn't just, okay, they'll get a lot of ground balls or, okay, they'll get a lot of swings and misses, but it's also hard to hit those pitches really hard, right? You know, Clay Holmes isn't getting up a barrel all season. I don't think anyone's mentioned this. Not one barrel. All season. That's the one type of quality of contact that you never want to give up. And he has not given up one all year. So, you know, that's a product of having really good stuff. Just think about it. You know, even if he's not locating, if it's right down the middle, a 98 mile per hour sinker moving the way that Clay Holmes' sinker moves, coming from that tall frame, it's working up down, right? You know, you're like, I mean, how do you, how do you hit that pitch, right? It's a hard pitch to hit. Um, so I think while, yes, he's going to walk a lot of guys, and that will be the reason that if he struggles in an outing, that'll be why. Because he... he Lost command, he's walking guys, skipping the ball to the plate. Those are reasons why he'll lose the game. It's not going to be because he goes in there and he just gets blitzed, right? He goes out there, you know, sinker, home run, sink, slider, home run, sweeper, home run. That's typically not how Clay Holmes loses baseball games. Um, but, you know, I, I think because he generates such 
soft contact or he, he gets away from, you know, giving bat- batters what they want, which are barrels, um, that it works for him, right? And if his flaw is going to be walks versus giving up a lot of barrels, I'll take the walks because a walk is just one base. Whereas a guy who goes in there and has trouble um, preventing extra base hits is going to go out there and give up a double and a triple and a home run. And those are damaging, right? You know, runner on second, no one out. Clay Holmes comes into a game. If he walks the first guy, it's first and second out. You could argue that's an even even more ideal situation for a guy like Clay Holmes who is going to give up a lot of ground balls, right? And it's ultimately inconsequential as long as he doesn't go out and give up a hit, which is something he's done really well at. So, you know, I think the Yankees and a lot of teams are focusing more on controlling BAPIP, which is, you know, batting average on balls in play. Um, And that's with, you know, launch angle management, again, inducing soft contact, getting a lot of strikeouts. If that you know, is at the cost of giving up more walks. I think they're fine with that. Um, my per- preference for aesthetic and like, you know, just like not liking walk to walk, not liking that p- pitchers walk guys at certain points doesn't supersede what I think is probably a better process on paper, but I'll have to like run the math on that or something. But I- I'm pretty sure that the Yankees are okay with Clay Holmes walking a guy instead of, you know, having like, a roll this Chapman situation where fastball down the middle, 480 feet into left field. I, I keep bringing up Chapman, but it's just because he's the type of guy who goes out there and does give up, you know, a big home run here and there. That's not really what Peralta and Holmes are about. So, you know, I think that that's something that's really important for us to remember. When we're talking about flaws and, and what they're doing well and what they don't do so well. Absolutely. I mean, look, right now, Clay Holmes has turned things around, and that's all we can be kind of happy about because he was definitely looking to be a liability just a couple of weeks ago, and we were like, can he turn this thing around? Can he get back to normal? And obviously, he did just that, and, you know, obviously, you kind of pointed out the weaknesses there, um, and it was tremendous. It's a really, really good job um, by Clay and this coaching staff to figure out what was going wrong and ways to fix it. So they've been doing that with a lot of players, though. You know, the injuries, not so much. The Yankees continue to go down left and right. They gain back three guys. They lose four guys, and it's like, come on, like, we're just want to get healthy. We, we get so close to a perfect, you know, health, bill of health and getting everybody back. And then the second that happens, the second we sniff it, just a, a full health bill and just everybody contributing in a positive way, it all goes downhill or not goes downhill, but rather we, le- we start losing more guys and we're getting back. Um, so it's unfortunate. Luckily, I mean, it's not even lucky. Aaron Judge, I, we're holding our breath there. Um, I'm really scared, honestly. I have to say, I'm really worried that that toe injury is going to be a little bit more serious than he's letting on. He said he's never broken his toe before, and you know, I'm not even going to put that bad energy out into the world. Hopefully, everything comes back fine. He only needs a couple days, and he's good to go. I think his pain tolerance is pretty significant, so it seems like he's kind of just ignoring the pain at this point in time. Um, but all we can do is hope and pray, my friends. But as always, make sure to drop, drop a like and subscription below in the YouTube comments. Make sure to drop a conversation starter. Always happy to have a good talk with you guys down below. As always, make sure to have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.